Software development is a strange kind of thing. It's esoteric as a profession, and most people who aren't close to it, and even some who are, often have strange, inaccurate views of what it takes to do a good job. Many often assume that it's mostly done by brilliant teenagers in their bedrooms working alone. Professional software development doesn't really look anything like that. Despite these misconceptions and its somewhat esoteric nature though, software development is important in the world. It's the thing that more than anything else is really driving our modern high-tech culture and the economics behind our global civilization. These misconceptions matter because to the layperson and often to the companies that wield the software that are, is created by software development, there's often this dangerous illusion that software is more likely to be correct than people. And that may or may not be the case because software is written by people and as such is just as likely to be wrong as anything else that people do. The result of this complex mishmash of the technical and the cultural is that sometimes software and how it's built intrudes more into the real world. Sometimes for good reasons, but also sometimes for bad. There is a current scandal in the UK that m many have called the biggest miscarriage of justice in British history. It's currently playing out and at its heart it's the result of a failure of software, both in technical terms but also in terms of how we interpret and react to software failures, culturally and organisationally. Particularly expensive software failures. Let's look at some of the technical roots for this failure and what this means for software development as a human activity. Hi, my name is Dave Farley and welcome to my channel. Uh, if you haven't been here before, please do hit subscribe and if you enjoy the content today, hit like as well. The UK post office scandal is an ongoing disaster that has been playing out for over 20 years. It's the result of a poorly written software system. That isn't the scandal though, but it is the cause of the scandal. This channel is a technically focused one, so it's not really our place to look into the appalling consequences of this software failure, and more importantly, the consequences of the immoral corporate reactions to that failure, where hundreds of innocent people had their lives ruined because of corporate cover-ups carried out by both ICL, a part of Fujitsu who created the software in the first place, and the post office who bought and ran it, both of whom actively worked to hide the reality of software errors and instead worked to place the blame for the misaccounting that resulted because of the bad software on innocent post office employees. In order to maintain the fiction that the software was fine. When problems were being widely reported by sub postmasters, the people in charge and responsible for local branches of the post office, they were being told that no one else was seeing any problems with the system even though the technical problems that caused the misaccounting were well known by both Fujitsu and the post office. This resulted with 980 people being prosecuted. On average, one person per week between 1999 and 2015 was prosecuted by the post office, 980 of their own employees. The Horizon system was a point of sale system an electronic till designed to simplify accounting and to manage banking services for the post office. I once led a team that built a point of sale system for a roughly similarly sized organisation. The system I worked on had 10,000 stores. The Horizon system serviced somewhere between 12,000 and 20,000 post offices depending on which sources you read. So I'm going to make some assumptions based on my experience of building comparable systems along with what technical detail I can find from public sources about the Horizon system. This system is a large complex distributed system with information spread out in different computers in different locations. That alone makes this a complex project. The kind of system that is inherently difficult to get right. Let's look at why that is the case. Horizon was built of many pieces. There were counter systems running at the point of, of servicing customers inside a post office itself. These were connected together and capable of passing information between them. So there's a local network in the post office and local communications going on between the counters. 
uh, inside the post office. These networks were then connected to the bigger, more complex centralised systems via wide area network connections. Now, it's in the nature of distributed connections that you can't rely on them. There are lots of ways that these things can and will go wrong. We may be unable to establish a connection to start the conversation with a distant component of the system so that we, they can't talk to each other. Information may be lost in transmission, so conversations may be lost altogether or even worse, partially lost. We may fail to connect at the receiving end, and even if we do connect, we may make a mistake interpreting the information that was sent. If you stop and think about this, this is not really about computers. This is just about information in general. This is just as true of information flowing around on pieces of paper as it is of information flowing on computers. And this problem gets even more complicated when all of the information is changing concurrently in different parts of the system. Where does the truth of a system like this exist? Because now there are multiple versions of the truth represented by each place where the information is being held and more importantly, each place where the information is being changed. My point here is that this is complicated stuff. Part of the function of the Horizon system was banking and the post office acts as a bank and as a payment network for social benefits. Horizon was meant to manage all of this. This is kind of handy for my purposes because banking is often used as a classic example of the problems inherent in distributed communications between computers. So let me pause there and thank our sponsors. We're fortunate to be sponsored by Equal Experts, Tricentis and Transfic. All of these companies offer products and services that are very well aligned with the topics that we discuss on this channel every week. So if you're looking for excellence in continuous delivery and software engineering in general, do click on the links in the description below and check them out. Let's imagine that we have two accounts, yours and mine, and I'm going to send you some money. This is a lot more com complicated than it looks on the surface. For example, let's imagine that for some reason I can't connect to your account. Something may be broken or maybe the system's just busy, but whatever the reason, Right now, my account can't talk to yours. So I can't make the transfer. So the best that I can do is to record the fact that I'd like to make the transfer. So perhaps I could log a deposit to your account somewhere. But now, what should happen to the money? <clears throat> if I leave it in my account, I might ex accidentally spend it on something else. So it should probably stop me from being able to do that. But if we remove it from my account, where should it go? because we can't put it into your account because we can't connect to it. Maybe we should imagine putting it aside in a safe place, a separate pot of money perhaps, that's ring fenced to be used for other things. So now it's reserved so that I can't accidentally or on purpose spend it twice. But what if something went wrong as we moved that money? What if we took the money from my account, but it never ends up in the separate pot of money? Or what if somehow we move, the move was duplicated and so more money was, than was intended was allocated? These things are always possible and banking systems, whether based on paper or silicon, understandably do lots of work to try and make sure that money is neither deleted nor magically created. At least they usually do. One of the ways that we can protect changes like these is to use something called a transaction. We need every step in the movement of this money from me to you to either all work or for none of it to work, or at least for none of it to result in any changes that lasts. No money invented, no money deleted. Bad things happen if transactions like this only partially work. If we move the money from my account but it never arrives in your account, then we've deleted money which is a bad thing. We need absolute to be absolutely sure that everything worked every time we move money. But let's carry on with our example because we have ju only just started. What a transaction is really is a form of error correction protocol. Transactions allow us to fix things if something goes wrong. Transactions are meant to deliver us some guarantees. These are usually called acid properties of a transaction. Acid properties were invented in the 1980s to handle interactions like moving money between accounts within a database. Acid transactions should be atomic, that is, they either succeed or fail as a whole. No partial progress in one part of the system. If we can't deliver the money to your account, 
so that it ends up there and you can spend it. We don't move it from mine. Transactions should be consistent. The system remains to outside observers in an always consistent state. So the money is either in your account or my account from the perspective of an outside observer. As we've already seen, this is a problem for distributed transactions because we can't guarantee that the system will allow us to take the money out of my account and add it to yours at the same time. There may be delays between these steps that get in the way. Transactions should also be isolated, meaning isolated from other transactions. So if I'm moving money to your account and you are moving money to my account, at the same time, these are two distinct separate transactions, neither of which depends directly on the other. Finally, transactions should be durable, meaning that once a transaction is complete, whatever it entailed has been successfully accomplished. It can't be lost by, say, a crash of the system, and to undo it, we'd need to create a new different transaction that unwound the previous one. If you haven't come across all of this or thought about it before, this probably sounds pretty complicated. That's fair enough, because it is. This is complicated enough when we're thinking about moving data from one part of a database to another within the same database, but it's horribly more complicated when you add in all of that and the ways in which distributed communications can and do fail. For example, moving money between my accounts and yours when our accounts are in different places. At every stage of the communication, we need to ensure that we aren't losing or duplicating information, even if the system or parts of it are failing in the middle of such transactions. What do I mean by duplicating information? Well, the obvious solution to a problem, if the money doesn't arrive at your end, is for me to send it again. We don't want to take the money out of my account, though, more than once, because then I'd be paying you twice, so it has to be a once-only operation. So we could imagine some protocol, some process running that would notice that there was a problem with the transaction and then roll it all back, unwinding all of the steps that had happened so far so that no trace was left. Perhaps moving the money from the reserved store back into my account. And then, and only then, we could start trying to resend the money to you to repeat the attempt. If all of this worked perfectly, then no money would be lost and you'd end up with the money that you were supposed to get and I'd end up with a correct sum being taken from my account. This is what banking systems do. It's even more complicated than I've described here because they're usually distributed systems as well as error correction through transactions. We also need some assurance that the instructions that make up the conversations between the endpoints in a distributed system like this takes place as they should. They need to happen once and only once. Anything else is a problem that we'll need fixing. So now we need things called distributed consens consensus protocols to protect those conversations between different parts of the system. This is complicated stuff, but it is essential, except that the Horizon system seemingly failed in nearly all of these different ways. There was a bug that the people at Fu Fujitsu and in the post office knew about. They called it the Dalmellington bug, named after one of the post offices where it was f first found. In this case, there was a well-known problem that caused the screen in a counter terminal to freeze while post office staff were trying to confirm the receipt of cash. So when a customer turned up at the counter and wanted to deposit, say, £8,000, the post office worker would enter the detail of the deposit into the Horizon system and press the button to confirm it. Then the system would crash. What would you do at that point? Probably the same as the poor post office employee. You'd press the button a few more times in case you hadn't pressed it quite properly or to try the process again to try and make it work next time except that when the Horizon system was in this state, the button was still live. So if someone pressed it three more times, the system registered the £8,000 four times in all. So a total of £32,000, not £8,000, was recorded as having been deposited. So Horizon was inventing money. The system was ma had magically created £24,000. So these transactions were neither atomic nor isolated, as they should have been. And now, sub-postmasters were responsible for paying back the missing £24,000 and were being accused of stealing this imaginary money. 
Another bug called the Calendar Square bug, named after another post office, represented yet another way in which transactions were duplicated and so mistakenly created even more new money and added it to the central record in the Horizon database. This software was, by any standard, poorly written. And for software of this importance and impact, that's not a great starting point. Davy McDonnell, one of the developers from the development team at ICL Pathway, who built the Horizon system, said in court that of the eight people that built it, two were very good, two were mediocre, but we could work with them, to, qu to quote David, and the rest weren't capable of producing professional code. Again, that's a direct quote. This wasn't the kind of system where that is good enough or acceptable. This was always going to be a difficult system to do well. The problems of distributed transactions and consensus are world-class problems. When I say, which I often do on this channel, that I think that software development is one of the more complicated things that we as a species do, this is the kind of thing that I have in mind. We are nearly always just a few tiny steps away from some really quite deep problems, often with serious consequences if we get things wrong, as happened in this case. I am pretty sure that the people building the Horizon software didn't start out with the aim of destroying people's lives and killing some of them. But that's exactly what happened here. And that is one of the reasons that professional responsibility for doing a good job matters. Several people have in fact taken their own lives and many more have had their lives and livelihoods destroyed as a direct result of being blamed for something that was not their fault and almost certainly beyond their understanding given the information that they had access to. Even this though isn't really the scandal. The scandal is that when Fujitsu, the owners of ICL Pathway and the post office, found out about the bugs and the problems that they were causing, they not only continued to defend and use the faulty system, but they also continued to blame sub-postmasters in local post offices, sending them to jail, even lying to them and to others about the problems. For example, denying that any other post offices were seeing any problems with the Horizon system, when many of them were, hundreds of them were. To rein this back to the topics more appropriate to this channel, I guess that there are two burning questions here from the perspective of software development and engineering. Should we, as a profession, have a duty of care to do better than this? Should the half of the team who weren't up to the job have been dismissed, or at least sidelined and given work more in line with their skills and understanding? Ignoring for a moment the obviously scandalous parts of this story, the misdirection and lying and throwing the blame onto innocent people and then putting those innocent people into jail, and then carrying on doing that for 20 years while trying to cover your tracks. From the professional perspective, who should be responsible when crap software hurts people like this? Thank you very much for watching, and if you enjoy our work on the Continuous Delivery channel, do consider supporting us by joining our Patreon community. And I'd like to take this opportunity to say thank you to all of our existing patrons for your ongoing support. Thank you again.